Now I'm building up some more washers on the top of these trees and this time more in the middle of the scene, picking out once again edges of the where the trees overlap. Same colour mixture, the French ultramarine, sap green, the touch of light red added into it. So here goes, we've got an edge around here that I'm going to pick up and this is what really what we call negative painting putting in the darks behind to make the lighter parts in front stand out that's really one of the main characteristics of watercolor or one of the ways of working with watercolor and as that emerges into the main body of this tree you can see we've got the top edge here the bottom edge of it here soften it away with some clean water and I'm pulling the paint out from this wash that I've put on and that gives us a three dimension now it's starting to feel like we've got layers of trees appearing out of this initial wash there's quite a bit of loose work again on this left hand side let me just put one or two more splats in there and soften them out again with some clean water these areas are just one color remember i put them on as one color and they are looking a little bit flat so just one or two touches of some slightly darker color gives them a bit more definition and we've got areas merging now that that's really quite nice it doesn't matter that that you're precise with the details all over the the painting some areas can merge together let's bring in one or two bits of darker tone down there still using the same colors but look how this underwash is showing through. Now this is really important. That underwash, the very varied wash that we put on, first of all, is really doing so much work for me here. Just take a bit of that wetness out of there. That's probably going to run back a little bit there. Doesn't matter. I've just seen I've forgotten to put the middle of the track in there but we're still at an early stage with the painting so I can put that in and use the lemon yellow with some of the sap green just to bring some brightness in there here in the background in the distance of this track uh, we're going to try and create extra light or an extra light effect so keep those colors nice and pure and it's more shadowed in the foreground so dipping into this mix that I've created with the ultramarine, the light red and the sap green now I'm going to work on this right hand side and once again we've got edges to watch out for and really pick up on back to this grey green mix and the thing that I'm looking at is this edge around here where we've got the nearest shrub or hedge showing light against dark and this tree here in the distance is darker still so that will go in later on as we progress with these washes and, and gradually make them darker. Now down here we've, we've actually got uh, quite a change in colour. The area down there is in shadow but there's a lot of light shining into that shadow area and, and we've actually got 
quite a darker but brighter colour. So I'm using just pure sap green there, just in this area here where the light's bouncing into the shadow. If you can pick up on little things like this, they really do add great dimension and definition to your work. Now we've got a bit more tone to put in down here. This is the darker part of this foreground hedge. I'm not trying to cover every part of the picture up. It's, it's quite important to leave one or two areas like this uh, of the underwash showing through. And it's really that combination of layers of washers, each one uh, showing through the next and bits uh, exposed here and there that really gives it the watercolour effect. So I'll leave that to dry and then we'll come and add some uh, further washers on top. Right, we're building up this um, painting now in terms of tones really and we've got some very dark tone to put in now so using the same mixture of color the sap green French ultramarine and light red but this time much more paint and less water and I want to put in this darker tree in the top so we'll work out from the bottom side of it You don't have to paint right around the edge of this wash. It's very, very loose. It doesn't matter if you overlap one or two bits of the uh, white parts showing through or, or even around the edge. Now, when you start to build up the tones and you really work towards these darks, then you can begin to see um, other tones that, that require darkening and, and here now this didn't really stand out early but now it does now I've got this darkening I've got something to compare it to and so I'm going to use this tone here to darken this section up right in the distance now look at the contrast there between this light area this is the the white part of the paper And that's against the darkest part of this painting. So it's really giving us contrast and contrast gives us impact. So it's quite important to consider the strength of tone that you're using and really strive. It's very difficult to create these dark mixes and have the confidence to put them in. But they do work, so do put them in. Now one or two darker bits in here, this is very limited. I'm not trying to cover the whole thing with dark tone, that's about enough. We'll soften out some of these brush strokes, brush marks. Bit more depth required down here. And all the time, because I'm painting trees, I'm trying to create textures by using a stippling technique that allows little chinks of the underwash showing through. And when you've got a few layers of paint with this technique, then it really starts to look three dimensional. One or two bits of extra strength in this corner and again I'm not worried about 
detail as such just suggests some grass so just flicking in there one or two grassy shapes and I'll soften those out maybe the same over here whilst I'm using this green I'm going to put in a shadow I can just see the suggestion of a cast shadow in this picture but I'm like I said earlier I'm really trying to emphasize the light so I'm going to make this a little bit stronger and this is the edge of the cast shadow the same colors again that I've been using for the trees the French ultramarine the sap green and the light red little bit of sap green on its own there Right, the, um, the painting is nearly finished now. We've just got the cast shadow to put on the track and then I'll have a quick look at it and see if I'm happy with the whole build up of it. We've got a different color on the track obviously and the shadow for that wants to be a different color accordingly. French ultramarine and light red. Now we've got the edge of the shadow across there. This is more exaggerated than, than in the photograph. Just a touch of extra French ultramarine there. That really does very very subtle and you can hardly see it but it does make a difference to the washers now look at that the real light effect is working that's because we've only got this isolated part left of light washes of light paper so it really does show that you need to consider where the lights are going to be at the start of the painting and either use masking fluid or paint around the shapes and i think that's about it really um, we've got the full range of tones in there we've got those real important darks in there and although it's just more of a complicated painting, it does show that if you break it down into simple washes and simple brush techniques, then you can really achieve some nice work. Well, I've really enjoyed working through these exercises and paintings, and I hope that I've managed to inspire you to get started in watercolour. now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop is now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.